So, if you want to get geek, because I've had this question as we have been talking about the tests that are coming next week. I hate the question, is this going to be on the test? Right, which first off, the, if it's not on the test, what, what, you don't care? Like, so first off, ask yourself why you're asking. But then, what is the test? Okay, right now, immediately, next week, the test is the Ohio State test that you're taking. But really, guys, the test is life. So, again, as we get towards the end of the year, you got to be honest with yourself, because part of our final, yeah, we're going to be taking a final. My classes take finals. In high school, you have to take a final. I want to prepare you guys, so my middle school classes also take finals. Um, our final assessment, part of it's going to be whether or not you want to move into Math 1, because if you don't, like, I'm not going to make you. Um, all of you, if you pass the class, are ready to. Um, but think about, like, it's your life, right? Your life is the test. Do you want to keep moving and do, doing the hard math, like more advanced, or do you want to take a breather and maybe focus on some other things? You're a lot different than you were a year ago, right? Your interests, your passions, what you want to spend your time on. Maybe a year ago you were really into math and that's what you wanted to spend your time on. Maybe now you're not as into it, and that's okay. So actually, I will tell you, we've had a person already kind of flip-flop. They thought for a minute, like, we had a conversation about, so if I don't want to do Math 1 next year, how does that work? And we talked about that, and we sort of, like, looked at that path, and they flip-flopped back to, like, oh, so I was actually just kind of freaking out because I was really behind on my practice work. And now that I'm doing my practice, it's making sense. And I was like, oh, my gosh! You mean when you do it, it makes sense? <laughs> huh. So, again, encouraging, please do your practice. It's uh, the only way you learn how to do what we're trying to learn how to do, right? Yeah. Maybe. Uh, yeah, uh, to to do the thing we want to do is how you learn to do the thing we need to do. I did the thing. I learned the thing. I've done the thing. I will no longer do the thing. <laughs> All right, Sam Mallory. Of Mallory's ice cream shop. Yeah, yeah, is trying to make some decisions. Why is it that all these people just need our help to make their decisions? So he needs your help in determining how they can create a cone with the largest volume, because they want to be able to advertise like our cones have the largest volume possible. So. Um, actually, one one guilty pleasure we have at home is watching uh, those baking competitions and cooking shows and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so some of you might be aware Duff and Buddy, uh, two professional bakers, are having like a head-to-head -head contest, and each week they do different competitions. Uh, just like a week or two ago, Buddy um, from uh, whatever I forget the cake shop handmade like a hundred waffle cones, like from pouring the batter to make the waffle, and you just barely undercook it. And then you pull it out and you wrap it and you like let it dry and then it like becomes a cone like immediately. Wow. So just like that, if you were trying to make a cone but not waste any of the cone, right? So by making a waffle and then wrapping, you're gonna have like overlap. If we think about what a cone is actually made up of, the net pieces, the edge of a cone is what we call a sector. So you might want to make a little picture in your notes um, to help you be aware of that. So this, a part of a circle. Right, like a wedge, a pie slice, whatever you want to say. No matter how much of the circle it is, this is almost half of the circle. I should probably hold it over here. That's what we call a sector. And now, if you want to know, other uh, circle vocab is that this is an arc. Why couldn't you, you were just working this morning, and now you're mad at me? This, the edge, a portion of the edge is called an arc. But the area, the grade in space, is called a sector. Don't ask me why I did not make up that phrase. Probably because it's a section of the whole thing, but yeah. So, your test. Using the materials provided, which really means anything in my classroom. So if you guys are comfortable with my room now, you know where things are. If you want a shapes template, if you want a protractor, if you want to use anything you want. Determine the angle. Of the removed section, sector, which we're going to start some of this together, 
That results in the largest volume. Hmm. Well, that's what we're determining, is what size should we make this? So, we are going to have to make this waffle, determine how much of the sector we want, because really, if we use that much of the sector for one cone, we can just get multiple cones out of the waffle. Right? So if you envision this, seriously, how cones are made, you pour waffle batter on a waffle maker. You pull it out and you curl it, and then it hardens. So when you pull it out, it's still like malleable, but then it hardens and it dries. So you have graph paper, right? And we know how to talk about the volume of a cone, right? Yeah, what, what fraction do we use? A third times what the volume of the cylinder would be, and to find the volume of the cylinder, it goes back to how big the, yeah, the, how big the base is, right, so how big your big B is, and then how tall it is, right? Now, that how tall it is, mm, I'm debating how much to give you, I want this to be more creative today. Um, now, like we said, we're over on our copy costs, so what I would be giving you, quote unquote, is this stuff. But you can make circles. So instead of destroying a bunch of paper plates, we're just going to use our graph paper. Now my advice, make one center and make multiple circles out from that to compare like circle A, circle B, circle C, circle D. Because the bigger the circle, the bigger the sector, but then you can tri like check your angle of opening. I'm going to let you play with this for a minute, see what issues you run into, and then I'll help you, but I don't want to over help you. Wait, you can make one cone out of the You could, but that'd be kind of wasteful of the supplies. Like, of what you're using. That's for you to decide. Create cones of various sizes. Yes. Eyes are like on the TV shape and edges are like feet. Right? Uh, so be careful. We now use the words faces. So yes, you're correct. What you just said is correct. But like, so this is the edge of my desk. This is the face. Okay. But if I'm looking at the top, this is the side. Oh, okay. So I can still use side with creepy shapes, but like this is the side of my desk. Right? So that's where size gets complicated. We, we don't like that word anymore. We're going to use face edge. So even with a 2D shape, I prefer using the word edge, like the edge of the square. <clears throat> Now, I was kind of, so I'm trying out different things this year, right, and your, your dynamic of your group is different than the others, like different classes, every class has a different dynamic. I think we're going to have to agree on something, or there's going to be too many variables here. Who's ever made waffles? Yeah. yeah. So, so George, if I asked you to make me a three-inch wide waffle, could you exactly do that? Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, like perfect circle. No. Yeah. Are you possible? So I was waiting for somebody to ask the question, but I don't know if any of you will, because I don't know if you've cooked enough. When we go to make a waffle, I don't really get to make a lot of choices. I make the batter, and there's a pretty set way to do it, and I pour it in the waffle maker, but as soon as I pour it in, I have no control over it. Now, gravity has control over it. My waffle will have a maximum size, because it'll start overflowing and coming out the side of the waffle maker, but it doesn't have, a, a, I can't make them smaller. I can't say, like, oh, I want a mini waffle, and just, like, even if I only pour a little bit, it's going to expand out however it wants to, and then it might just look messy, not look like a circle. The question I was waiting to see if anyone would ask, as I kept saying, you pour the batter into waffle maker, and how big is our waffle maker? Right? I doubt that Mallory's Ice Cream Shop has eight different sizes of waffle makers. So, with me telling you to compare different sizes of circles, I was hoping somebody would think about, but we wouldn't be able to make different sizes of circles unless you have different waffle makers. 
So let's let's agree on how big our waffle maker is. Now, when I was watching Buddy and Buddy and Guy compete, his waffle maker was about this big, probably. And if you think about the waffle and what's going to end up, when I curl this, this is kind of, like this edge will end up being this. It's kind of going to relate to like how, how tall, not only how tall, but like when I hold my cone. Where did I set my cone? Where? What? Oh, I don't feel cute. So this radius, this, give me your eyes real quick, this radius, we need to agree on. The radius will end up being the side of my cone. So how big is our waffle maker? What do you want to say? Is it a foot wide? Is it 14 inches wide? But then your radius is only going to be six, or seven, right? Because it's only going to be half of that. No. That's, that's an ugly. I like that thing. I like six. I mean, like, I I think that's We have to agree. That's kind of a small waffle maker. Okay. Alright, let's agree that our waffle maker, and you can scale your graph paper however you want. Let's just say it's a foot wide. Let's make it easy. Just be able to use it. So, don't try to draw a foot wide circle on your paper. Just draw any circle. But then that means our radius is what? Six. Now, I can't write on that screen, so i got to swap my screens real quick. Yes, Quinn? You know where those things where you can make the circles, um, where it's just laid on the uh, Compasses are gone. They're being borrowed by eighth grade. Yeah, compasses are gone. Hey, you can use what George has. That does the same thing. Oh, yeah. Wait, I'm used to better Yeah. I trying to find that we know the radius is 6. We had to agree on how big it might go. But you shouldn't be measuring it. We're going to just tell ourselves that it's 6. Hey guys, I want to re-clarify what we're trying to do here. I realized that my instructions were a little weird. What we're trying to determine is how big should we make this sector. So essentially, where should this be to maximize the volume of our cone when we have a fixed waffle maker, right? We only we only get six inch radius waffles, but I can determine how I cut it. Now, obviously, if I cut this to 60 degrees, I could get six out of here, right? We're not worried about how many I could get out of the waffle though. We want to know what would maximize the volume if this is the size waffle maker we have. Michael, hold your waffle up. 
<laughs> Yo, I there's a curious conversation happening up here. Simon cut a tiny little sliver out of his. Could I please cut Santi to the office? And he made probably the fattest cone I've ever seen. <laughs> we'll say pH fat too, like cool, right? <laughs> fattest cone ever. <laughs> then Micah made a cone that looks to be about the same size circle, but so what they were talking about was, sure, your cone's big, but it's not very tall. Your cone's smaller, but it's tall. Shoot. So figuring out the height is going to come into play here. That's for you to answer. Quit asking me questions that you can mathematically process through. Hmm? No. But now it's not as wide. Wait, how is it? through this, we need some numbers, right, some information. Now, we have a set waffle maker. It's 12 inches wide, 6 inch radius. So if I just calculate something, take the Dr. Smith route, right? I don't know what to do, but I'm going to do something. I can find the circumference of my waffle maker is 37.7. That might be helpful. I don't know. All right, give me your eyes up here for just a second, because i got some people that are listening and some people that aren't. And I fear the people that aren't listening, five minutes from now, are going to ask me exactly what I'm going to help you with right now. If I just go to calculate anything, I can find the circumference of the whole thing. Now, I'm just taking a random guess, but if I try 60 degrees, because it's a six, and I had six on the brain because I had six inches, so sure, might as well. That would then translate to my cone having six inch, like, edge lengths, but that's not the height. To determine the volume of our cone, we need the big B. But to get the big B, we need the R. And right now, I don't, no, this R is not 6. This R is a result of this section, sector, right? Shoot. Now to find that R, if we had this circumference, we could work it backwards, right? So if we had the circumference, we could determine the diameter. And once we know the diameter, we can get the radius. But I keep having this like, crap, I need the, I need the, I need the. Well, we need the height too. We're going to have to get there. Height is the end goal. 
But that's the radius of the big waffle. This is the radius of the top of my cone, which will not be six inches. If you hand me an ice cream cone that's a foot wide, I don't know if I'm going to know what to do with that. Okay. Smash your face into it and eat your way out. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Hey, so this is going to sound rude, but shut your mouth for a minute. And just think. I got people like crumpling up paper and making crafts. and like, come on, turn on your brain and think. We take a section of a perfect circle and we wrap it to make our cone. So this is what we're talking about, right? The, the top of our cone, I really today wish I would rip this off, but I'm not going to disconnect the piece. So the sector we're dealing with is this, and what we're talking about is the circumference around once we wrap. Right, I'm not going to overlay. We're going to try to make a perfect cone where it like seams together. Like bigger than 60, but that doesn't even matter. Use your imagination to say it's any angle. Like we could cut some of these off and we could make it a different part of the angle. Where does the circumference of this circle come from? The amount of the arc that we cut off with our sector wraps and makes our new circumference. This arc turns into our circumference. Because this edge connects with this edge and like seams on one of the sides, like right here, right where my cone connects. And this that was on the big circle, right, makes its own little circle. How could we determine what this is? Okay, yeah, it's the part that we cut out. Nobody say anything. Think for 30 seconds. How could I determine the length of this red arc? If you already know it, just keep it in your head. 15 more seconds. Now, if you still don't know it, I want to help you process through it. How many degrees is this? How many degrees is this? What fraction is this? This sector gets one-sixth of the circle's area, and it also gets one-sixth of the circle's arc, or circumference. Take your 37.7, divide it by 6, and that's going to lead us to that new... Now, that's if I'm using 60 degrees. So your task, we still have about 15 minutes left, is using different degree measures. How does that impact our volume? I'm going to go ahead and finish this up here. You can keep doing yours, or if you're still kind of iffy, you can watch my process. But I'm just going to write all the math that I would need to. Okay. I encourage you keep doing your thing. I just wanted to connect this amount of the arc becomes our new circumference down here. I'm going to try to not talk for another five minutes. I'm going to try to not talk for another five minutes.
To find the volume, I'm sorry, I know that was only like two minutes, but I hit another roadblock. I'm annoyed. To find the volume, we need big B times the height. We still don't know what this is, and don't you dare say it's six. Six was our radius that wrapped to make the cone. But this, as you all are discovering, that height changes doesn't matter if our radius changes. That height changes depending on how much of the circle I use. Mm, bad words. How do I solve this? I am not going to do it for you, at least for another three minutes. Which means I am stuck. Unless I write more. Oh, mm, at this point, we do. We, do you know how inaccurate that would be? just try to measure a physical object that we've made to kind of represent the thing that we're sort of dealing with. That's also not right. That's so radius. I know. That's you can't physically do it. We have to use a math that we know. So you fighting with the physical isn't going to get you any more costume. It's going to get you frustrated. We need to try to analyze this through the mathematical lens of not how can I build it with paper, but how can I solve it with math. Yeah, and if I still finish trying to whatever the radius is, it's already telling you that it's already got like Seems like a good idea. It's over behind the lamp, Connor. What you're thinking of is kind of halfway blocked by my lamp. I want to make sure that we can actually solve this problem, not that we just spend the whole class kind of spinning and thinking about ice cream because I'm hungry now. Connor's got an idea. Connor has an idea. Based on what I highlighted up there in blue, he like had this moment of like, wait. And then he rattled off something to me. Connor, what was that? So the idea that came into Connor's head was a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In a cone, give me your eyes, we have a right triangle. <coughs> the edge of our cone is the hypotenuse. The radius of our cone is one of the legs, and the height is the other leg. Guess what? I've got two of those. I can find the third. Because we know we th this is six, because our waffle maker. We found out based off whatever math you did, your radius might be different. 
because you cut your angle different, but my radius came out to be almost exactly 1. So I can do 1 squared plus something squared has to equal 6 squared. Or if I write this out, we say 6 squared equals 1 squared plus our height squared, right? Because that's what we're dealing with now. Well, 1 squared is 1, so we have 36 equals 1 plus height squared. So height squared is 35. How do I then figure out what the height is? How do I... Yeah, square what? Square roots. And we get 5.9 for the height. Now, knowing that that's 5.9, we can actually solve for our volume. Using a 60 degree wedge, my volume would be 3.14 times the height of 5.9. Once I do that, I divide by 3. Now, you might very well have a volume higher than mine. But based off this cutout wedge, the volume I got was 6.175. What our question comes down to is with a different wedge, do we get more volume or less? I would challenge you with our remaining 10 minutes, try a 90 degree wedge, try a 180 degree wedge, try, like, try a couple different wedges. All of this still holds true, we just have to recalculate as we change the size. Yeah? I don't understand is why we have this What do you mean? So the only way to get tones is to first cut a sector and wrap that to make your tones. This is a sector, and it's only this size, like almost half the circle, based off how, how wide they wanted the cone to be. Right? Like, depending on the size of the cone depends on how big of a sector. So like, if I go to think about, well, this is a much larger sector than a 60 degree, this is probably like 100 or 120 or something, like, I'm going to try 120 because this is like bigger, so if I go back, and I redo this with 120, I gotta redo all my math. Because then that's a third of the circle, it's a third of the circumference, but my height will be smaller. Right? Because it's gonna squish it. Wait, so what would make the biggest thing? Yes. Now that would be a cool cone design. Wait, what would the biggest Connor, that is exactly what I'm asking you. Like, that's what you're trying to solve. Don't ask me the question I'm asking you. follow my work. Do your own. I'm just seeing what happens if I double. No! I don't know what I'm doing. The way I see it, the larger your, uh, the larger your sector, the bigger your, uh, so, no. At some point, we get too short. You know, there's like a maximizing point. There has to be, because that's not like every time we get bigger, we get shorter. So there's got to be some perfect maximization. 
Oh no, this I actually genuinely honestly to you. I kind of adapted this and made this up as we went. I'm not following CPM today. I just six is easy to work with in circles because how the math comes out and how certain things work together. Because so when six is very close to two times five, so it's a nice number to work with in circles because this number is very close to one. Or, you know what I mean? That's why I chose six. Now this isn't all that surprising, but when I doubled my angle, it seems like I've doubled my radius. Now you don't have to be following me, you can take whatever degree measure you want, but when I doubled my angle, my radius got doubled. Here's where the other stuff though starts to trickle down effect change. So if my radius is doubled, and this is still the same waffle from the same maker, I still have a right triangle, and I still have that six inches because my waffle can't change size. So now my Pythagorean theorem, though, c squared equals my leg squared now is 4 plus the height squared. So this becomes 32 is the height squared, and my square root of 32 for that height is only 5.66 approximately. My big B. I just I hear a big B and then I hear someone behind me. Yes. Five times radius squared is four, so 12.56. Seven if we round. Now be careful, did you divide by 3 at the end? You still need to divide by 3, because remember, it's a cone. All right. Wait! Now, I gotta check this math, but when I made my arc 60 degrees of the circle, I think this all holds true. I think my height plus my B, multiply big B. I got a volume of 6.175, unless I did something wrong. I mean, okay, so volume is 6. But now I double the amount of the arc that I used. Is that double the volume? No. Snap. That's like four times the volume. So there's got to be some point where our volume stops getting bigger and actually turns around and starts getting smaller because as Simon was discovering, my cone keeps getting shorter as I keep using more and more. When he used almost all of the circle, his cone was very short. We're still nowhere close to that, like getting real short, right? My challenge for you, and as I was up here discussing with Quinn, I actually haven't finished this. I don't know the answers. This isn't straight from CPM. I kind of adapted and modified as we went. Um, if you want to take on this challenge, there's a certain size of cone that will maximize our volume. We're going to pick this conversation up tomorrow. Um, aside from that, have a wonderful day, guys. We're still about a minute early, so you're in no rush. Um. Um. <laughs> Okay. I wonder if she called her. Oh, let me stop this. Yeah. Um,